Good morning, uh, and welcome to the trade setup with me, Neera Shahid. Unfortunately, from a bull's perspective or from an investor's perspective, not the best of mornings to see. But remember, they say celebrate corrections for you get to buy good assets at cheaper prices. But in the intermediate period, the corrective phase is the one which is painful. So let's see the pain uh, for sure. So Dow was down 600 points. Nasdaq has entered a correction mode after the weak jobs report. 10-year Treasury yield dived to the lowest since December. It is at 3.79 as of Friday's close. U.S. crude oil, too, despite all the geopolitical tensions, was down more than 3% as the economic anxiety grew. Berkshire Hathaway, and this has been the talk of town all the weekend, right? That Warren Buffett is increasing his cash pile. They've slashed Apple's stake by nearly 50%, but a clutch of others being sold out there as well. Volatility perked up in the U.S. market. CBOE VIX was up 25% in Friday's session, up 40% last week. I think this is the telling point that we're looking at higher volatility in our markets uh, or markets at large across the world. In fact, the key reasons for this, and viewers, you need to know this, so just keep this in mind. BOJ's or Bank of Japan's decision to raise interest rates took yen to higher levels, effectively starting the unraveling of the yen carry trade. Simple, the, the unwind started, and you know this was the strongest level against the US dollar since March, by the way. Now, what typically happens in a yen carry trade, you borrow cheaply from the Japanese markets because interest rates are low and predictable. The currency is lower, the currency doesn't rise. And therefore, you borrow from the yen, convert it into a whichever dollar or whichever currency that you're wanting to invest into, and then make gains there bring it back, put it back, and make money. But if the interest rates rise, and if the currency rises, then there is a problem there, and I think that is what is happening now. The global sell-off we've seen in the equities in the last 48 trading hours. Unfortunately, viewers, I must tell you that we do not know the extent of the damage that this can cause. I don't think too many people know. We'll try and get in global opinion, but I don't think too many people know the extent of the damage that can happen here. What I'll try and do is tomorrow on the trade setup, maybe I'll try and get in a global guest. Investors should expect increased market volatility in the near term. This seems to be a given. The, the good part, though, about all that's happened in the recent times is that the expectations from the Fed have now risen, and the Fed action may well be a bit of an antidote to the global volatility and the pullback. So Citi expects 125 basis points cut by the end of 2024. JP Morgan expects 50 basis points cut in September and November. Bofa sees the rate cut starting in September versus expectations of December earlier. So this might actually help world markets by and large. Remember. Uh, U.S. markets were weak and the futures are looking wobbly as well. Asia is taking it on the chin. Japanese markets in particular are substantially lower. The Nikkei will come up on your screen. But Nikkei, Kospi, ASX, Hang Seng, Straits Times, everything has a tinge of green to itself. China will probably fall relatively lower because they have corrected so much relative to other markets that they will only fall lower. In fact, I do think that the Indian fall may be uh, relatively tempered to the rest of the world as well. For now, 363 points lower, but that's about a percent and a half or thereabouts. So not as bad as some of the other Asian markets. In fact, that's my bet on the trade setup, that the global queues take center stage. India problem, though, is one of valuation and not the one of contagion. But because world markets will fall, India will follow suit, and the valuation concerns may come. Why do I say, though, it's a valuation concern? Because flows in India are still in our favor. Markets will see a downtick, but will outperform the rest of the world simply because I believe that the domestic flows will come in and cushion this blow. Now, I'm not talking about today's move. I'm talking about the next few days. If the world markets continue to be in a tizzy, then this may happen. What will change these viewers, by the way, if Japanese markets or if the Bank of Japan comes in and tries and soothes some frayed nerves, if they do, by the way, we don't know that, but if they do, then that might help world markets. I mean, and specific pockets, no point in talking, but I mean, you know, consumption, which is the hiding part usually is also seeing mixed signals, QSR stocks, are the commentaries not at all inspiring. Look at what Sapphire Foods is saying. Look at uh, the commentary that came in from Barbecue Nation. Not that great. So keep this in mind that uh, it's looking slightly wobbly uh, from a world market perspective. So that's to be borne in mind. I'll take you through specific stocks because I should, but I really doubt that too much of them will make a difference. I mean, results were in line for Britannia and SBI, and I think uh, the Nuama note on SBI lays it out that it's very likely that there could be near-term pressure on the stock, even as Q1 FY25 pad beat the consensus by three percentage points. They say that 
Um, the lower NIM was offset by lower OPEX, but given the lower impact of new investment norms compared to versus guidance and peers, the near-term stock reaction shall be subdued. But they believe that this is a strong deposit franchise in a deposit challenge sector. I think that was the key line. I mean, they've maintained a buy, but it's a strong deposit franchise in a deposit challenge sector, and that might help the stock. So that's to be kept in mind. This is a key line from no one. I think it lays it out, but today, SBI 2 will see a bit of a correction. Uh, Titan will see a correction as well. City is a neutral rating. The target price has been raised to 3510 versus 3310. But I think it's there is their view on competitions. They say that aggressive store expansion by existing players and an entry of a new player, Novel Jewels by Aditya Birla Group, which will invest about 5,000 crores in retail jewelry, may keep competitive intensity elevated. They maintain a neutral rating given slowdown in the pace of market share gain and margins and earnings downgrade risk. Can what happened to Asian Paints, could it happen to Titan, is the key question. But let's wait and watch. Today, very likely could see a bit of a fall. Now, despite markets looking weak, delivery or Met Plus might correct less or may actually gain as well. Delivery revenues were up 5% uh, in line with estimates, but the margin performance was much better than estimated as a result of which the bottom line performance was very, very strong too. Expect a bit of a reaction positively here. On a normal day, I would have said this would have gained quite a bit, but maybe not this time around. Uh, similarly for a Met Plus Health, revenues were in line with estimates, but margins did much better as a result of which the bottom line performance was much better. So margins strong, Bottom line performance strong, Met Plus could well have a good day. I suspect though that Met Plus delivery, even a Divi's lab, which has done better than estimated, may not necessarily do as well as a normal day would because the market correction would weigh in on them. Stocks like Arcane Chemicals, Sheila Foam or Nuclear Software, all of these which have come out with the weak numbers will correct. So let's move very quickly on these plates. Arcane revenues down, margin performance weak, pad performance lower, so will correct. Similarly for a Sheila Foam, revenues were up 26%, but margins really cracked as a result of which the bottom line was up just 9%. But the margin performance of problem point, this one will correct as well. Nuclear software, weak on all counts. Revenues down, margins down, pad down. Very wobbly quarter, very likely nuclear software could see a massively short reaction in the session today. Watch out for this one. Uh, there are a couple of other stocks. Power Grid has been a successful bidder for an interstate transmission line in Rajasthan. Defensive name may correct less. Gland Pharma weak because the numbers are, uh, the news is bad because USFD has issued three form 483 observations to a facility in Hyderabad after a surprise unannounced inspection. Watch out for gland may correct. SJVN, big positive news, I would reckon, but by virtue of the numbers. Don't know the exact quantum of the order win, if you will. But positive seems very likely should, should do well generally, but may not because of the market reaction. Now, viewers, I, you know, I've not chosen a lot of brokerage notes or specific stocks on purpose because the markets are in a corrective mood right now. I'll just leave you with one point. <clears throat> I don't think too many people know the extent of damage that can happen because of this kind of unwinding that the yen carry trade does. You look at past histories of what a yen carry trade unwinding does and the market moves are very, very sharp and fairly pronounced. Now remember, Indian markets are trading on expensive valuations and if the yen carry trade unwinding happens, while we have our domestic flows to support, there could be sharp drawdowns if indeed global flows move out. Japan a very strong earnings market has fallen 20% from its peak. We are nowhere close to that. I'm not saying we will correct 15, 20%. We may, we may not. I do not know. I don't think too many people know. But what we will try and do on the channel during the course of today and the next few days is try and get you the best opinion to assess what could happen. All I'm leaving you with is that don't think that the market have corrected and therefore this is a buy on dips today itself. It may well be but we do not know. So the best thing you can do, do not do leverage longs. Uh, the other thing you can do is that if you want to deploy gunpowder, if you are sitting on cash, you want to buy some good quality stocks, sure buy them, but don't buy them all at one go. Yes, they may go up tomorrow, I do not know that. But if we, because nobody knows that, you want to be a bit careful. Cash may be gold in a scenario like this, when there is a yen carry trade unwinding happening, and when there is geopolitical stress. 
So you might want to conserve your cash a little bit. It's okay to buy 2-3% higher as opposed to buy right now and then see a 5-10-15% downtick on your purchases. Be very careful with your money. Thanks so much for tuning into the Trade Setup.